Hey YouTube, Dawson Brenner here. Welcome to my review for Mashi and Sentai Kara Major, episode 22. And this was kind of the second part conclusion to the Zabune and Curing Brahead arc. And this was a really cool episode. I like this episode a lot. I enjoyed it a lot. There was a lot going on. I feel that this arc about the poisoning went way faster than I thought it would. I think that's probably because they got their episodes cut short from the hiatus they had to take. But I'm okay with that. You know, it didn't feel too rushed. And also I'm glad that like it probably affected this and not the end of the series and they have enough time to plot the end of the series. But that being said, despite it maybe being a little more condensed possibly because of the delay, this was still an enjoyable conclusion to this arc and I like that it ended with this debut of the mech and it kind of almost felt like an also conclusion to Silver's sort of longer introduction arc, uh, which was neat and it was mixed with a bunch of different tones with some cool action, um, some good character dramatic moments, and some really funny moments. So basically where we left off is everyone was in trouble because Brahead's ailing and the Rangers are having a hard time beating the Monster of the Week and they're regrouping and Silver's brother's like, okay, I figured out a way we can save her. We just got to go back to the past. Samurai Jack. So he figures out like we can go get the powers of the Aqua Crystal which can heal Chiz. And they kind of say like, look, did you not watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Waves not ripples. We can't affect anything too much. And he's like, no, we're actually going to like use the past in the future, future past, future past. And Barry's like, they're going to go find a sample of the poison in the past to bring it to the future and not affect anything. They're not going to stop because the original thought was, oh, let's stop the curse. But that would obviously have a huge effect on time. And Silver agrees to stay in the present with some of the other rangers to protect it because that was his promise to his sister was that he was going to be a hero for everyone and not just her. So Juru and Yellow and Green go to the past to take care of this. And so, you know, I'm not going to talk too much about it, but basically, you know, the rangers are fighting in the present and then Garza shows up to buy time and so that's kind of going on but like the main entertaining stuff happens in the past and I, I'm a sucker for like even just mini time travel stories and this had some good humor and stuff in it too it also reminded me a little bit of the the Q Ranger storyline when they traveled to the past but like on a smaller scale obviously but it was really cool so green and yellow have to distract Silver's family while Red goes to steal part of the poison. So they dress up as the muddies, like the putties. Hey, I just realized that rhymes. And God, that was so funny. Cause like they're really bad costumes and then they do like a roll call and Green says, I'm gonna muddy things up. And then they're just like screaming and running all over the place and like trying to figure out how long this has to go and there's like an explosion behind them. I just thought it was really funny humor for like a good like situational and time travel-y humor. And Red's trying to steal the cup, but he's having a hard time because she's stronger than he anticipated. Um, I'll be interested to see, I, I imagine that might come back, that she met him somehow, and that might have some sort of effect. We'll have to see. But she definitely recognized that he had something to do with like the Crystallia stuff. But he was having a hard time and he could not get the cup, and he ultimately ended up, you know, deflecting a shot from her, and then Red's mecha showed up, and he's like, we have to go, otherwise the portal's gonna close. And he tells the guys, I didn't get the this poison, and it's like, oh no, what are we gonna do? And in the present, Silver's like about to be beaten, but he's like, I made a promise, you know, I have to keep going while the other members finish this mission. And then just then, Red shows up with Aqua, and it turns out that he, once he realized he couldn't get the poison the way he wanted by stealing the cup, he just made her attack him and he got some on his sword. That's not a euphemism, that's what happened. And so they were able to analyze it and restore Aqua who was like crusted over in this poison. And he created the shark form for it. And it's funny because like they say Zabune but the subtitle says Da Shark. It makes it sound like a shark that's a DA. Like, you got legal problems? DA shark. Then he shows his inspiration for the mecha, which is like the pure version of King Express, King Express Zabune. And I really like this one. I really like most of the Mecha and Cure Major, as I've said uh, throughout these reviews, but they're like a really good mix of something new and a little bit retro feeling, and I really like the look of this one. It looks cool in person. The fight was cool. Even the stuff with the individual mech had a little bit of an individual mech fight, and I like that Cure Major sometimes does that, have like fights that aren't just mech versus mech. But they win the day. Brahead is cured and everything is happy and it, like I said it's kind of a resolution to Silver's arc because he says like now I'm ready to fully fight with you guys now that his main mission is done which was the reason for that quest was obviously to cure his sister. And there really wasn't a setup uh, for the next arc or anything like there was last time when we ended the last arc and then we immediately introduced this uh, poisoning arc, uh, which is fine, I don't mind that, but I'm, I'm curious now to see what the next little mini arc's gonna be. But I thought this episode was really enjoyable. I liked 
liked the conclusion to this arc. I thought it was a really good moment for Silver. Kind of a nice conclusion for him of, uh, you know, he was already working with the team, but being able to put this mission to rest and fully work with them and learn to just look after other people besides his sister. And in general, I've liked his character. It hasn't felt like he's just one gimmick. I've mentioned before that's been kind of my problem with some of the six rangers in previous years where they feel like the male Pokemon companions where it's like, oh, I like girls. The future is now thanks to science. I'm a connoisseur. It felt like they were just a catchphrase and it's made him feel more like a character. I thought it was a satisfying conclusion to that. I love the time travel stuff. It's a cool bit that might come back to bite us later uh, in an interesting way. It had some really funny moments. And I like the, the, the debut for Aqua. And for most of the things in Kara Major is memorable. I was thinking about that during this episode, how now whenever I see it, I'm going to think about the time travel plot and the, the fight to save Brahead. And I like that and instead of it's just like, oh, here, or here's an introduction because we want to get the toy on the shelves, that most of the Kara Major introductions have had somewhat of a storyline to them. Some of them less memorable than others, but even like the little mini auxiliaries have had a little storyline to them, and I really appreciate that. So I really like this episode. I'm actually going to give it a nine because I thought it was a good mix of all the tones that I like about the show, and I'm looking forward to seeing what the next little mini arc is going to be. But what did you guys think of this episode? Let me know in the comments as always. Until next time, if you like, comment, subscribe, and climb the steps, and ring that bell, and you can use for my videos. Dawson Rider, signing out.